hey Nick, hey, hey Nick, Dave. hey Nick, hey Nick. Hi Dave. You know how I have a whole other podcast for all my geeky stuff? Space and things, yes. I don't like, yeah, I don't like crossing the streams too much, but I think right here is a perfect opportunity. Never cross the streams. <laughs> well, well, they've only gone and found water in the sunlit parts of the moon. Have you seen that? That's been announced today. No, I haven't seen that. What's that got to do with whiskey though, Dave? Because I'm pretty certain within a few years, we may have the first official moonshine. <laughs> and I just, I can't wait for it. I can't wait for it, Nick. I think it's going to be amazing. Proper moonshine with water from the moon. Oh, I see. Moon. <laughs> oh shine. my God. Really? Took you that long? Took no, it you didn't. that long? It didn't, well, that was, it, it, oh. it didn't take me that long, mate. <laughs> Trust me, it was... I was really happy with that one. Okay, good. Uh, I, I hope the listeners are. So I've got a really good joke <laughs> that crosses the streams. Anyway. I'm going to put in my notes, Dave's intro gag, question mark. <laughs> in episode 32, we're tasting and sniffing the Four Roses Small Batch Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. Long name. <laughs> And we look back at how we first got introduced to drinking this favourite drink of ours. The golden nectar that is... Whiskey. Isn't that Foster's? I don't know, mate. Oh, Oh, it's the amber nectar. I'm reclaiming it. Reclaiming it. (laughs) I can see the pub from here. (laughs) As always, you can see some more whiskey-based content on all our social media platforms. Yes, at Whiskey and Things Podcast on Instagram and at Whiskey and Things on Facebook and the Twitter. Please, please, please drop us a rating or a review or maybe just send in your comments on what we've talked about. And if you really like the podcast, maybe the best thing you could do is to share it with anyone you know who might also like drinking whiskey and listening. You're listening to the Whiskey and Things Podcast with Dave Giles and Nick Kent. Moonshine, mate. Moonshine. It's a good joke. Anyway, welcome to episode 32 of Whiskey and Things, the podcast. I'm Dave Giles. And I'm Nick Kent. And why not start off first, like everyone's expecting, um... Dave, how are you this week? Oh, no one wants to hear about that. So how let's, are you? Let's just go straight in, shall we? <laughs> what is up? You know, you had a, you had a go at me Nothing. last week for not asking how you were. So how are you, mate? You right? Yeah. Well, I know, I know you don't care. I know huh? you don't care. So there's no point. It's just no point, is there? Of course no I point. care. We don't, You're my co-host. We don't have to do that on this podcast. <laughs> I've had a long day, mate. I'm driving. I'm a delivery driver now. I've had a long day. I just want to have a drink. Let's have a whiskey, shall we? Let's do that, mate. Don't worry, I'm fine. Fantastic. <laughs> Glenn Livid. <laughs> whiskey bots roll out. So, Nicholas, how how are you? How are you, Nicholas? I've had to put the heating on, mate, up here in Manchester. So, I'm, I'm another reason why I'm Glenn Livid. But yeah, no one cares. <laughs> no one cares. So Nick Nick is wearing a nice thick shirt with the buttons done all the way up to the top. The sleeves too. It's a heating thing, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, the sleeve. Yes, yes. Dave was like, "Oh, you're smart." Just get I'm a big like, hoodie. I wear these shirts all the time. It's just that I've actually done all the buttons up today. Why did you not just put your, your New Zealand hoodie on or your whiskey and things hoodie on? I don't know. I thought, thought like a bit brighter colour on the uh, Instagram videos might be good. You know, eye catching. You know, rather than blacks and Where? you know. Well, no, I like the black hoodie. He, mate, said, your he way. says that. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Because we're doing what, what? What? What are we doing today? Because I thought the colours of my shirt, the reds, you know, and the yellows, might correspond to the uh, the colours which you might think of when you say the name of this whiskey, Dave. Interesting. Talking of which, this week's whiskey: Four Roses Small Batch Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. Um, with mate, your shirt's perfect for this whiskey. <laughs> oh, right. I know. Oh, absolutely See? perfect. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> I love it when a plan comes together. I do too. <laughs> anyway, tell me more about Four Roses. Well, the uh, origins of this are a bit up in the air, mate, depending on where you read. Oh, yeah. Um, their website, Four Roses, um, says that the name Four Roses was trademarked in 1888 by Paul Jones Jr. after he moved his thriving business to Louisville, Kentucky in particular, a section on Main Street called Whiskey Row four years earlier. I've been looking up Whiskey Row today, actually. It's quite interesting. We won't go into that now, though. We won't go into that now. Um, Yeah, but other accounts say that it was established by, and gets its name from, Rufus M. Rose. Um, In 1867, Rose 
of Rufus M. Variety, moved to Atlanta and he founded the R.M. Rose Co. Distillery, also known as the Mountain Spring Distillery in Vinings, Georgia, um, which is 12 miles north of Atlanta. And he sold corn and rye whiskies to the public uh, from retail outlets he owned and operated in Atlanta. And according to some accounts, his company established the whiskey brand Four Roses in 1888, the same as Paul Jones Jr., and likely named it in honour of him, his brother, and their two sons, which would mean the Four Roses. Nice. Yeah. But that's not okay, what that it says sense. on the website. So it's a bit up in the air. Interesting. Bit up in the air what's going on. You are right there, mate. You got your head in the book. Oh, well, I'm just on, on the... You checking, you checking my stats? Well, well no, because I know that... You checking my stats? Look, whiskey books aren't, aren't necessarily that good sources for this kind of stuff. Uh, and I think we've found out that, that out before, haven't we? Haven't I quoted a book before and it's all been very incorrect? Uh, but, but yeah, the, the Bourbon Bible by Eric Zandona says, originally founded by Rufus Matthewson Rose in Atlanta, the Four Roses distillery and its whiskey was trademarked by Paul Jones Jr. in 1888. So absolutely sits on the fence and doesn't make a decision either way about which one of them <laughs> actually founded it or how it started. It's, it's very on the fence. I just thought I was reading as you were reading that. I was like, Do you know, I, wonder, I wonder what they say in my book. Yeah. They, they don't make a decision either way. So you may as no. well cut all of that out. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like it. I was waiting for you to chime in with something. <laughs> I mean, it, it, def- it definitely backs, backs up what you said, doesn't it? It backs like, up anyway. both stories. Uh, so it does. It does. It does. But, so uh, what does the website say then? Or do they just not really tell a story of the history? Yeah, the website says it was uh, Paul Jones Jr. Right, okay. I imagine like most other distilleries, it's gone through a lot of different owners over time. Yeah, it has. Right? Yeah, it has. Um, it's it's kind of weird, actually, because it's now owned by the Kirin Brewing Company, who we've heard before, because they also own Bullet. Bullet. And, of course, we found out that a lot of Bullet, before they had their own distillery, was kind of Four Roses bourbon. You know, it's kind of... A, oh, yeah, yeah, I remember that. I remember, yeah, yeah, Do you remember yeah, that? Because yeah, yeah. what well, the, I the older stuff, because we did the 10-year, didn't we? And that, the 10-year yeah. would have been distilled when it was still Four Roses. Cool. Um, but yeah, I mean, they stopped actually selling to the American market for years from the 50s. And actually, you know, only started selling it again, apparently in around 1994. Um, again, this is where it's a bit vague on the website and I found other sources, et cetera. But it was, it was in 2002 where they where the Kirin Brewery Company bought it, they definitely reintroduced the straight bourbon to the American market. But that was definitely when they stopped selling blends, which is one thing they were doing uh, towards the end of the century. So yes, yeah. but, um, the brands, uh, the distillery they have in Lawrenceburg, Kentucky, which is what, where they still are, I think, uh, it was built in 1910. So it's been there a while also, David. It has been there a while. So, so with, with Four Roses, we're, today we're drinking a small batch bottle and, and, and we'll come on to more about that. But they have, there's a variety of bottles that they've got a more standard looking bottle of whiskey, just their standard Four Roses, which you'll probably see yeah. in quite a few bars these days. Uh, yeah. It, it, it's, it's definitely in more bars than it used to be when I first heard of, of, of Four Roses. It used to be really quite difficult to find over here. Um, but but now you see that original bottle quite a lot. But the small batch every now and then you see that in a bar as well over here, and it is nicer. It, I mean, we'll go into to, to, to differences about them, I'm sure. Uh, but also, I saw that one the other week, didn't I? The single barrel one in, in that I want to try as well. Oh, you did. Uh, yeah, that was in that department store that didn't like me. Anyway, yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. didn't like the way you addressed me. Um, yeah, because what I love about Four Roses, right? If you go on their website. They're very upfront on how they make it. It's great. They have like 10 bourbons, basically. They have two mash bills, okay, which is on the website. It's fantastic. They have a mash bill B and a mash bill E. And it has the ingredients. <laughs> it's fantastic. Nice. So, so just, the, just, the, just just quick summary of what a mash bill is again. Mash bill is the recipe of which grains go into the whiskey, basically. So the mash bill B we have here is made up of 60% corn, 35% rye, which is quite high, and 5% malted barley. Their mash bill E is 75% corn, only 20% rye, and then the 5% barley. So that's what they do. But then they also have five different strains of yeast they use to create the different flavours they want as well. And then to create their whiskies, after they've aged them, they just mix together 
what they want from those 10 different, you know, amalgamations of bourbons. So that's how nice you know, they come about. So the one we're talking about today, the small batch, is a mixture of four different bourbons. So two from Mashbill B with two different strains of yeast and two from Mashbill E with another two different strains of yeast, you know, and there are other bourbons are mixed together in other different ways, but it's really great that they're kind of, they have it up there on the, uh, on the website. That that's exactly how they do it. I like yeah, that. Yeah. And in each yeast, it, you know, it shows, you know, like what the um, qualities will come out. You know, they've got one which has, uh, will bring out the delicate rye and mint, you know, flavors. Another one will bring out baking uh, spice. You know, it's really good. I recommend going on the website. Are, it's quite cool. Are, are they naming, like, are they giving the yeast their proper name or are they code, coded in letter form? They're kind of all coded. So th- yeah, I don't know. So, yeah. yeah. So, so, They're going to keep some so, things so under wraps, but it's yeah, a yeah, good Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's up, up to a point, it, it's it's very open. Yes, 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 yes. Um, but it's quite cool for, if you're, you know, it's not too geeky, but it does, uh, it's quite interesting for people like me anyway. Um, yeah, but yeah. It. But the whiskeys in this bourbon are uh, they're at least six to seven years old as well so that's quite old for bourbon as well isn't it really uh, or is it i think i feel um, like that's quite old for bourbon yeah again it depends on how they're aged what they're aged in how big the barrels are or the casks you know the uh, temperatures of the where they're being aged etc but yeah it is a lot of them are like three to four years so again it depends yeah. there's a lot of, there's a lot of variables so this is a lovely bottle that I've got here. Uh, yeah, I sent Nick a sample of this. But I, I mean, uh, actually, Amar got me this. Uh, Patreon uh, Amar and, and friend, friend of the show, uh, Amar. Friend of the pod. He's mentioned a few times. For my, for my birthday this year, he sent me a, a voucher and I used it to buy this. Uh, so, yeah, thanks, Amar. Um, but the bottle is glorious. I... Uh, Kind of like I can't. What what shape would you say? It's a medicinal bottle kind of thing, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, an old medicinal bottle, and it's got like a a, a nice label. Roundy. In the middle of the label, it looks like there's these four roses, right? But actually, that's mm. em- embossed into the glass. So there's this yeah. this glass uh, little rose window. Know. Yeah, it's a rose window. Yeah, within the label, but it's also actually on the bottle, which which I like, and it's a nice big wooden cork stopper with a proper cork. Oh, go on, go on, go on, Dave. Oh, it's a bit of a squeak. Oh, it's Beckham Cross. Oh, Rooney Volley. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it also says handcrafted on the on the top at the label. There's very little detail on the bottle, even though there might be a lot on the website. Very diff- little detail compared to what was it last week we were talking? I was saying, oh, the bottle's got this on it, it's got that on it, it's got this, it's got that. Yeah. This has got very little. Also, the, um, the, the term small batch for me is a bit of an issue on this because I wouldn't count I agree this as with a that. small batch. <laughs> you know what I mean? I agree with that. Yeah, I mean, when we've been to Bimba and the small batch is a thousand bottles, you know, and because it is small batch and then you've got four roses. Exactly. And this is part of their core range. I don't know how a small batch can be part of your core range. Um, yeah, but there's they, no numbers involved. It doesn't say how many, you know, and and for a company to be producing whiskey at that price and calling it s- small batch, because this is only in this country a thirty-two pound bottle of whiskey. Uh, very reasonable. Yeah, and and in the states, it's, it's even cheaper. So yes, there's no there's no way that's actually small batch, but that, that doesn't take away from the quality. But it it yeah, the the, the name is a bit misleading. No, no, again, it? it doesn't matter. But and that's the thing. They've got another one called single barrel, right? Which is the thing you, you were talking about earlier on. And yeah, yeah. Again, I don't know whether it's they're from a single barrel or whether it's just because looking at the label, they do have handwritten numbers and letters on it. So I'm thinking it might be a single barrel, or it might be because you know I was talking about earlier on about the mash bills and the yeast types. The single barrel comes right. from one one mash bill with one specific one specific yeast. So I don't know whether it's just yeah. because of that or whether it's actual single barrel each one. Um, Again, we'll go into that when hopefully we try it one day. Dave. Another time. Another time, for sure. Another time. Uh, but yeah, that, do you want to know how I first discovered this whiskey? This is one of my the oldest bourbons I've been drinking in terms of proper bourbons. Um, and it was Chris Trevero, our friend Chris in LA, oh. back in 2014 when we were doing the YouTube show and I was in LA with him and I said, I want to take a, a bottle back for the show. Yeah. And he's like, go and try and find the, the small batch. 
uh, Four Roses. Oh, really? And he said it's quite, he actually said it was quite hard to find. He said it's quite right, hard to right, find. Right. I found it in the first liquor stop I went to. But, um, <laughs> I mean, he, he wouldn't well. necessarily drink this kind of stuff. So maybe he wasn't necessarily looking out for it. But yeah, and, and, yeah. and I brought it back. So it, you can actually see us drinking this back on the old YouTube show as well. Uh, there's an episode with Annie and Danny. Was it? Where I'm, well, yeah, it's that episode we we did the four roses. Dang, there was a couple. There was the, a couple the, the, of those two. Where where we where we ate all the pasta, and I'm sitting there in my gold cuckoo kangaroo outfit. Oh yeah, there it is. Okay, that, that was our four roses small batch episode. Well, look at that. If you uh, look if you at that. look that up, don't. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Nick, Nick, I'm sure we'll put a put a comment in the in the show notes. <laughs> put oh, the am link I? In the I'm going to link that one, am I? Oh dear, <laughs> just to see Dave in some gold tights. If, if it, I mean, don't get me wrong, I don't think we did any kind of taste notes on that, but it would be interesting no, no, no. to see our no, reactions don't go, to it. Don't go back and watch the YouTube show for anything actually legitimate about whiskey. You know, <laughs> about <or> whiskey, notes. <laughs> yeah. We yeah. had no idea. <laughs> It More was on that Wayne's later. World but, um, <laughs> with a glass of whiskey. Yeah. That's all it was. So we, um, I'm getting, I'm getting thirsty, mate. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> um, it's quite a dark amber, actually. I think. Are you saying that? Like, I was going it's a mid, dark gold. mid to light amber. To be honest, I've seen darker. Really? Yeah, yeah. maybe. Well, I think this like is quite that. dark. Yeah. Okay. I'll, go, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. It's bourbon color. It's yeah. a bourbon color, <laughs> for sure. Um, it's definitely a on the nose. Color. What are you getting on the nose, Nick? I, I know you've been been testing your nose recently. So before I, yeah. for me, it's put sweet. In your head. It's spicy. I'm I'm getting those cola bottle sweets on the nose for me. Oh yeah, yeah, cola cubes. Yeah. Oh, love a cola cube. Oh yeah, cola cubes. I I sorry. I am also getting uh, on top of that. I'm definitely getting some almond. Definitely some almond in there, uh, oh. and. Mm, some cherry cola kind of thing, uh, yeah, cherry coke. That's that's probably in there as well. Um, but yeah, definitely, definitely the almonds. It's got that a little bit of marzipan kind of vibe. Not too, not too much. We've had stronger one of that before, but it's definitely. I, I'm definitely getting that marzipan. Great nosings, gentlemen. I'll just add to that a bit of cinnamon, citrus, and a faint vanilla. Oh, the vanilla. I'm definitely getting that now. He said that. Oh, yeah. Good note. Yes. Yes, God. Great note. Good note, God. Great note. Anyway, while you're here, do you, do, you want, do you want to take it from here, God? My pleasure, gentlemen. Tasting notes on the palate. That fruity cherry note hits the tip of the tongue and is strong throughout. It is swimming in and out of caramel and cinnamon in a medium viscosity. A very present and calming floral undertone heavily permeates and is very welcome, appropriate for such an aptly named bourbon. You will notice a constant reminder of earthiness as well. This could be the only note the charred barrel left on this very sweet and pleasant whiskey. On the finish, short to medium in length, sweet and wispy, slight spice. <laughs> Take another sip. Overall, there is a delicateness to the experience of this whiskey, but also stands strong as a proper traditional bourbon recipe. It is a welcome change of pace as a bourbon. Familiar, strong, yet almost heavenly. There is a premium complexity here not reflected in the very accessible price point. Four Roses Small Batch Bourbon. Ta-ta. Wow. Uh, yeah, thanks very much for all of that. That's um, Cheers, dude. I, I suppose I should try it now. Well, I've had it many times before, but let's have a sip. That is so good. That is so, so good. There's a lot of citrus on that right at the front. Oh, Getting it right too. on the tip of your tongue. Spicy. It's forty five percent, so not yeah. too strong, but uh, yeah, the burn is not too severe. Yeah, in terms of the spiciness, we don't know how much what the uh, ratios were with all the different blends they put in there. So they might that mash bill be with the thirty five percent rye in there might be quite high compared to the uh, the yeah. sweeter 
75% corn mash bill. So that's where that spiciness probably coming from. Lovely though. Yeah, it's really smooth. It, it, for a 45%, it doesn't kick too hard. No. Uh, it, it, go, it goes down. It, it, it definitely almost feels like a cocktail already in some, it's, it's got that much sweetness and fruitiness in there. It's got a lot of tingle. For me anyway. Yeah. Something else I'm getting as well. Um, in the nose, while it's in my mouth, which is weird, it's the it's the uh, the aromas going <laughs> from my mouth back yeah. up through my nose, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Um, I'm getting kind of a really floral, like roses, you know. Four like ro- roses, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? <laughs> See that? I can definitely maybe definitely that's smell why they called it <laughs> four specific roses. There's a red one. Hang on. Definitely a yellow one. Oh, it's definitely a yellow one, I was going to say. It's got to be a yellow one. Pink, maybe? A little bit of pink in there? Maybe a pink. Maybe a maybe a, maybe a weird blue one. <laughs> in which case, it would completely match my shirt today. Um. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. But yeah, on the palate as well, the, the cherry cola sweets for me coming through there. I didn't get oh, the definitely. cherry on the nose, but uh, yeah. But it's very tingly around the mouth as well. Um, I'm loving it. This is a very pleasant little drink. Uh, it's, it's definitely one of my favourites. And you know what? For the price, ridiculously good. Ridiculously yeah. smooth. Ridiculously good. For that price, <coughs> I, I, I mean, I just think that's amazing. I, I really do think it's, it's a phenomenal whiskey. Yeah, what are we chatting? About 32 quid. About 32 quid, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we will, we will of course, put a link... Uh, in the dubs and post that in various places, um, but yeah. yeah, this is a this is a f- mighty fine drop of bourbon. If you like your American whiskey, then you're gonna like this. I think. I mean, we've done I a know. few others. Do you know? Do you know what? Now I'm thinking about it. You are getting getting a bit of popcorn on the nose as well, buttery popcorn. Oh, okay. I didn't get that before, but now it's it's weird. As you you were right, as you drink it, other stuff comes out, and and that's what it I'm evolved, now getting. It evolved, yeah, yeah. It evolved. Your palate gets used to one thing, and then something else pops out. To say hello, exactly. Hello, exactly, but yeah. Is it corn you're looking for? Kentucky whiskey. I got some interesting um, Dave Broom additions to to add to this. Oh, now yeah. I I intended on going out and and and, and getting some mixers for this because. Uh, but I, I have been busy. I've been working. So, <laughs> oh, yeah. but uh, don't Amazon deliver those? What's What's really interesting? They do, they do. Perhaps I should have done that. <laughs> anyway, um, what's really interesting is that Ginger Ale he has given so Dave Broom in, in the whiskey manual for those of you. I, I this is a new book I've got which which helps you to drink various whiskies and and the small batch four roses in there in there and he's saying that Ginger Ale is incredible with it. Really? Yeah. Uh, and Coke's quite good. Coke gets a four out of five, but Ginger Ale gets a five star. Wow. Okay. A five star. And I'm a bit annoyed. He said, Ginger shows the exemplary balance where intense sparks of spice fly across the tongue, add into a long finish. That That's good enough that's for good. me. So yeah, yeah I, I need to get some Ginger Ale. And uh, I I did intend on doing that before the show. And I apologize, everyone, but I now have You're a mind. job. Um, so uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, uh, we, and with cola, he says, uh, cola becomes perfumed with added maraschino cherries. I can never say that word. Mar- maraschino cherry. Yeah, let's go with that. I, I'm saying it as it reads, but I'm sure someone's going to correct me. And charred oak. And then notes which the God has said within the thing. So it's just the cola just enhances those notes, I think. Yeah. But of course, I haven't got cola here either, so I can't check that. But that's Dave Broom, and Dave Broom knows his stuff, as we know. So... Uh, yeah, I now is. really want to try this with ginger ale uh, and, and I reckon some ice as well. That would be lovely. A nice, a nice uh, tall drink. That sounds good. Good recommendation, but also, Dave. Yeah, but when the whiskey's that cheap as well, like, why not? Try it all. Like, throw, throw it in a cocktail. Add it to your punch. Do what you want. Yeah. It's the thing. You can just, like, make a few, a few for friends when they're around, you know? Something a bit special. Yeah. Add it why into not? your sauces. Like, why not? Do it, do all kinds of stuff with it. Like, seriously, because when when whiskey's this good, but also this this good, pro- like, because I sometimes think that my real cheap whiskeys that I've got just 
that I've been bought or something, I throw them into cooking sauces because mm. that often adds adds something to it. But throw a decent whiskey into a cooking sauce as well. That's only gonna it's only gonna be good. It's only gonna add good things to your to your food, isn't it? Well, it's worth a go. And if it's not, don't do it Definitely. again. But you haven't wasted too much money. Exactly. Exactly. Anyway, uh, four roses, small batch whiskey, bourbon whiskey. <laughs> Kentucky straight bourbon. Four roses. Whiskey. Bloody large batch. It's great. It's it's bloody straight. large batch. <laughs> <laughs> but it, yeah, enjoy. Enjoy. If you've had it, don't forget to let us know what you think. Hey, y'all, what's bourbon and things? It's interesting that we brought up uh, the old Dave Broom there, Nick, after watching his film last week. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and doing our little review, The Amber Light. Um, it got me thinking, with that film having a whole background in whiskey and the storytelling behind whiskey, uh, it made me think of whiskey stories and our own whiskey stories. And also, on Patreon, a few when we were having our uh, t- episode 25, 26, I sent some messages around to our Patreon saying, have you got any things you'd like us to cover? Uh, anything you'd think would be interesting to hear in the show? And Kate suggested that we talk about our whiskey stories. So the mm. whole thing seems to have come together, and I feel like it's a good day to talk about our whiskey story, Nick. Well, gather round, children. You're older than me, so you started <laughs> drinking whiskey before me, I imagine. So uh, you can start. Well, I don't know. All right, I'll go. I'll go. Where did it all start? Where did it go, Where did it all go wrong, Nick? Where did it all go, Pete Tong? Oh, so, oh where did it all go yes. right? <laughs> Another well, 90s reference for you there, <laughs> Pop Pickers. <laughs> another one. We love those, don't another we? Another show, another 90s reference. <laughs> oh, bravo. There's another one. <laughs> um, for me, it started where it started, I think, for a lot of our listeners, simply just because of marketing and branding. For me, it started with Jack Daniels, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Being a musician as well. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, not, not because it was seen as a rock and roll drink. I think... I can't remember what I was drinking before, but a point where I think it was like, yeah, I'm going to start drinking it or whatever. My dad used to be a stock taker, right? He used to run pubs and stuff, but then he went into stock taking auditing. So I'd go around the pubs, like counting the bottles and making sure their books were correct, etc. And one day he brought me home a Jack Daniels branded Fender Squire Stratocaster, right? <laughs> Which Dave's smiling because I ended up selling it to him. <laughs> years later but this guitar was great (laughs) and then from that not only did I start drinking Jack Daniels but I started collecting all the memorabilia and that was one of the first kind of whiskey or like I don't know there was first one that I took notice of where you could literally collect all the stuff you know it's like collecting the glasses um, playing cards beer mats all kinds of things like at Christmas people would buy me Jack Daniels stuff so like oh Nick I like this it's Jack Daniels blah 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 so that's what I used to drink when I was out. Jack Daniels, you know, and Coke. That was the drink, yeah. you know, because it was the rock and roll drink and stuff. Later on, you know, I did become allergic to it, which did kind of put a bit of a... <laughs> <laughs> hey, I shouldn't laugh because he put did. a bit of a downer on things. <laughs> you know, it's we still haven't figured out whether it's the Jack Daniels or the Coke or yeah. the Combo. But it certainly caused a reaction in you, didn't it? Yes. Um, I used to, well, my lungs would stop working, which was a big kind of uh, concern of mine. And um, yeah, my face would go bright red and I would, my face would blister. It was really weird. And Dave and I had a little code while we were out, you know, called yeah the Red Baron. You know, like if I felt like I was getting a bit warm, then uh, I'd say, Dave, well, um, it's the Red Baron coming out tonight. As in, like, it maybe it might be a nickname for a friend of ours. And he'd be like, yeah, he might be. He might be, yeah. Or if he could, Dave could see me from across the room glowing, he'd be like, hey, Nick, Red Baron's coming out. Oh, all right. Yeah, that, that would be my signal to, uh, you know, start drinking. Down like, a few pints of water. Down some yeah. pints of water and try and get it back on track. But, um, but, but yes, it's, um, we got past that in the end. We don't know why I ended up nearly getting killed by Jack Daniels. But um, <laughs> but no, for me, that was my gateway into whiskeys, you know. And it was years later when I got into like single malt kind of stuff, probably when we were doing the show, to be honest, because even after the Jack Daniels, you know, we had our Jameson stage. <laughs> but yeah, for me, it wasn't just the, the drink. It was kind of like the uh, the image behind it and the marketing behind it. You just kind of got roped into it a bit, you know. 
So, Ab- absolutely. I, you know I, I couldn't mean? agree anymore. I, I was the same. Hence why I bought the guitar of you. Because yeah. I was like, oh, Jack Daniel's Oh, yeah, guitar. can I say? Yes. Um, did you sell that for more than I sold it to you, Dave? Did, uh, yes, that, but I auctioned it. So it wasn't flipped, my fault, was it? it? I didn't you flipped it. I didn't. Look, if something ends up with a higher value because I've owned it <laughs> after... <laughs> Surely I should then get the, the person who buys it is a bit of a mug, and it was Dan Reese, so it definitely was a bit of a mug. Wow. Uh, but it doesn't matter, because no he's also talking about sponsoring the show, so <laughs> he'll give us some more money, and that will go in your pocket as well this time. <laughs> I would try. Anyway, more on him later. Anyway, yeah, Jack Daniels for me was exactly the same as a teenager. That was Jack and Coke was the drink. I, I, don't, I don't know what made me go there. Whether it was someone recommended it and I had it, I was like, "Oh, that's tasty." Because it was a Jack and a Coke is a tasty. I love it's it. It's a tasty drink. I absolutely love it. Yeah, full fat and, Coke and all the branding and all that kind of stuff. Again, it was an easy, easy present. I'll get David Jack Daniels gift set for Christmas. I had loads of the little things. Yeah, and and I talk a little bit discouraging about Jack Daniels now, simply because I had so much Jack and Coke that I now can't really drink it and enjoy it. Oh. So that's a personal preference. And straight, I don't like it at all. I'm right. not a fan of it. Just, just neat. I, I, it doesn't doesn't work for me. So, no, not the regular one, the number seven, whatever. Not the regular one. Yes, yeah, so no. don't get me wrong. They've, I know they've got other ones which I which I've had and I do the like. But that regular nice, Jack, yeah. yes. Yeah. Uh, I, I remember your your old housemate bought got some of that that Sinatra Select one, the really Great, expensive one. That was fantastic, one. though. That was yeah. Ah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. That's funny. Um, but, funny you bring that up. I'm just going to buy in because Danny Gruff and I were talking about that the other night. Oh, yeah. And Danny was like talking about getting a, new, getting a bottle of whiskey, but maybe not wanting to spend too much this and the other. And he brought up the fact that I think uh, we'd mentioned in the show, whiskey's for drinking, you know, whiskey's yeah. for drinking and making memories and stuff. And both of us remember that night our, our housemate, Jack Bertrand, brought home the Sinatra Select. He'd been abroad and he bought it in an airport. And he brought it home, and instead of saying, "I'm going to save this," he's like, "Let's open it now." And the three, you know, three <laughs> or four of us in the house, we're all drinking. I think we did most of the bottle, but it was, and it was fantastic. It was delicious, and it wasn't like he could have saved and that and put it in the cupboard. It was a beautiful moment. You. We had sparklers behind the bar. We remember that night now as yeah. that night we did the Jack Daniels Sinatra Select, and it's, yeah, that's yeah, what yeah, it's yeah. for. That's what it's for. But yes, please carry on if you yeah. can remember where you were. No, that was that was lovely. That was a lovely, a lovely digression there, Nick. I thoroughly enjoyed that story. Um, uh, I mean that sincerely. And and then th- th- then the <laughs> next stage was when when I knew I had to. No, it's, I'm not. I'm not even joking. That was that was beautiful. And I know the people involved, so it makes it even mm. more beautiful. Um, on my 18th birthday, going back to the drinking too much Jack Daniels. My 18th birthday, we my dad arranged for some friends about 10 of my friends to all be in O'Neill's in Brentwood. And uh, and even my music teacher was there from school. <laughs> I wasn't very it's popular. worked in the small towns, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> so um, we, we were having the having just on the beers and all that kind of stuff. Um, it was a school night as well. And at the end of the night, as they called last orders, all the, the boys got together and put their money together and bought five shots of Jack Daniels. Five shots of Jack Daniels and put them on the bar. Not Jack Daniels mixed. Mm. They're like, oh yeah, Dave likes Jack Daniels. Let's do that. And I had to do yeah. it. Like one, two, and I got to the third one, and it, it all and all the beer ended up over the bar because uh, <laughs> it all came straight back up. And uh, yeah, I was projectiling. <laughs> wow. It wasn't fun. So yeah, again, those things like that just do put five finger spread. They do put you off a drink, don't they? Think when you have experiences like that, you're like, oh, do I want another one of them? The smell of it. Yeah, can, that's what happens. Can, 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 with me and Jameson's. Yes. Well, with that, then, then the whiskey, in terms of whiskey stories, that's what, definitely where it goes. And I imagine that for you, you went, you, our friend Chris, who we talked about earlier, it's, it, he is instrumental to my whiskey development because you lived with him for a year or six months or whatever it was. And yeah. you must have got into Jameson's then. You, you yeah. were saying you'd have a shot because it's his drink and you'd have a shot, but you'd always chase it with uh, Diet Dr. Pepper, DDP. Canister of DDP. Um, yeah. And then he was the, the year later or two years later, he was coming over here or a few years later. And I knew I wanted to drink, drink with him. So I was like, I need to get good at drinking whiskey. I haven't, I haven't done a shot of whiskey since that fateful night when I was 18. And that didn't end well. Yeah. 
So I had to, I was like, oh, I need to drink whiskey. I need to like, so we would go to the, I've mentioned this before on this pod, we'd go to the Weatherspoons or whatever pub it was. And I'd get, because I was trying to train myself, I'd get the, the Glen Fiddick 12 or something like that and sit there and just try and get used to the idea of the burn. Even though it's nothing like Jameson's, I was just trying to get used to it. And I thought if I try yeah. the nice stuff first, then when I shoot something that's not as good, I'll be a bit more used to the burn. And that was that was it. And then he came over and we did a week doing Jameson's. And then and then I was kind of hooked from Jameson's for quite a while, especially that way of drinking Jameson's, hmm. uh, of, of shooting it and having a chaser. But yeah, like on my 29th birthday, I remember being in the wheelbarrow. Let me think about this. Was it? Yeah, well, the 29th birthday, I was sitting in the wheelbarrow and anyone who come in, they'd be like, what do you want? A, a Jameson's. And I had two tumblers full of Jameson's because I was getting bought so much and I was just I pouring remember. them in. But it didn't put yeah, me I off. Like, I remember other nights like it. Yeah, yeah. I think we then went down. No, we did. Because that was the night we went down to the, the bar flight and the struts were playing. Were the struts playing? I think it was the struts that were playing. Someone was playing at the bar fly and we went down there. A big group of us. It, wasn't, it was. It must have been someone I knew. And you went down and got right to the front and started like, we're not worthy in the band. Right as soon as you got in there. I can't remember who it is oh, now. That's God. really annoyed me. Was it a band we knew, or was it like the Metalworks it night must, or something? It must have been. No, no, there was a, there was a reason we were. There is definitely a reason we went in in there. There was definitely. Oh a, a no, was it? It wasn't the Steel it. Panther tribute band, was it? No, that wasn't it. Wasn't that was night. Okay, that was a night that you and Danny had. Okay, um, anyway, let's go off. Now this is this is we went to the bar flight, and it was me. T- I was trying to do a friend a favor. I was saying I'll bring all my friends. It was Martin Griffiths band. It was halfway to New York. Oh, they okay. had a gig at the bar flight, and you went straight down to the front, and we're like, "Yeah." Oh, I was getting mixed up the morning. Yes, bar fly. Yeah, yeah, that sounds about right. Happy days. Yeah, anyway, anyway, <laughs> and 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 then it, and then re- and then really, it was us from that deciding that we wanted to do the YouTube show, and it being called Whiskey and Things, just because of my song Whiskey and Wings, which is about us drinking Jamesons with Chris, that made us start drinking different whiskeys, and actually trying to appreciate them and no we weren't doing tasting notes or anything like that we weren't we didn't Every week. we didn't know what we were drinking but we were just drinking a whiskey and just trying we were just enjoying to, it when we did just trying to yeah we were trying to find what we liked and what we didn't like and, every and, and, and week from that, we put the whiskey in in a tumbler with some ice <laughs> every week you yeah. know we weren't tasting it we were just sitting there having a chat enjoying the whiskey but that was the time you know that's what it was back then. yeah but but from from that after that you know by the end of that year, you and I were then, I remember there was a night in that October, we went on tour. You may remember this. I'm not sure, but we went on tour and we were in Birmingham on like the second night. And there was, a, we went out, which we probably shouldn't have done, but we went out, out, out and there was a karaoke bar. Do you remember that was a bar? Oh, there was a, there was a bar that was doing karaoke and it was out open really late. And you bought three Jolly Walker blues it's in the show. Yeah, I remember that. There's a video of us in, I remember, in the show. I remember. It was and, thirteen pounds a shot. I remember. I remember the cost. Yeah, and the three of us and the three of us drank it. I we may have shot it. I can't remember, but we were all like, This is really smooth. This is really No, don't we didn't shoot it. We didn't shoot yeah, it. But we, we wouldn't we wouldn't have been trying those kind of things had we not have done the show. Hmm. And appreciating the differences between the different whiskies and and maybe not understanding it, like not we didn't have a clue, but but I think after that year we then wanted to, and yeah. it's a gradual process of what is this drink and and seeking out whiskey bars and going to whiskey bar and going. Well, I've had that one before. I'll have one of those, please. Mm. Like for me, I became a dick. Like I love this Four Roses stuff, and bourbon became a thing. Mm. I remember that night. So I remember not being that impressed with the with the uh, Johnny Walker Blue, <laughs> to be honest. Because <laughs> uh, I was filming on my phone for possible content, and it, you can see it yeah. in my face going, hmm. Like, really? Was, and then you go, that is really smooth. And I just went, that is lovely. <laughs> just, kind of, <laughs> just went along with it. I mean, we were, it was meant to be nice. So I was thinking, hmm. In that clip, we were all quite drunk. Oh, yeah. So yeah. smashed. It probably wasn't the best time to get first impressions of us drinking Johnny Walker Blue. But no, we just yeah. done 20 ciders or something. No, our palates yeah. were really, uh, really in tune that night. So yeah, yeah. But yeah, we'll start us with, with the JD. For me now, I don't drink Jack Daniels and Coke often because for me it's now it's a real treat because I know that I may have difficulties, you know, with the old breathing <laughs> and stuff. Life. <laughs> yeah, 
but I'll have one yeah. as a bit of a treat now and again. Yeah, I just can't. I can't do it. I just absolutely can't do it. But there's a, there's a few whiskies that I can't do as a, like as a result of us doing that year and of us like there yeah. are some that are just I think are vile and I don't like. Yeah. Well, we'll maybe we'll get round to them. But <laughs> <laughs> bourbon, yes. But the other, the other, I think another big thing for my whiskey story was watching uh, watching Mad Men as well a couple of years, but like okay. four or five years ago, and all the old fashions, and then me wanting to get into old like just. Again, it's marketing because I watch the TV show and suddenly I want to try an old fashioned. But mm. I did want to try an old fashioned, and the place I first went had four roses and made me an old fashioned with four roses as well. So yeah, and it's a it's a it's a great cocktail. And 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 again, that all brought into it. And then going to Nashville in 2018 and hanging out with with people who knew their bourbon and and drinking load of Bullet and also load of other great proper small batch whiskey. Uh, was was a delight and it, it just opened up this this world of Mate, uh, yeah. American whiskey for Completely. me. For me, as you're saying that, I'm really falling in love with the whole whiskey world. You know, I'm getting really enthusiastic about it, especially this year. And well, the past, past few years as well, but especially as I've kind of um, been investigating stuff a lot more. For me, like... It's the culture around the whiskey as well, which is so romantic and stuff. You mentioned just now the bourbons and drinking it in Nashville. For me, the, the dream is having a bourbon in Austin with yeah with barbecue food, you know, out in the, yeah in the open air. That that adds so much to the whiskey experience for me. It's, you know, not just drinking it on your own somewhere. You'll, you'll you'll enjoy it, but it's so much more when you it's kind of in its natural habitat. It's the same when you're drinking yeah. like a, a, a smoky single malt scotch in a cosy pub somewhere and it's teeming with rain with outside. Fire. Yeah, exactly. With a, with fire. Exactly. That is that's natural habitat and that's where that lives. You know, there's, pub, there's other drinks which I'm sure would have as much of an effect in their certain surroundings. You know, gin and tonics and stuff, maybe an English country fate with floral stuff going on and different flavours. That's yeah. where that lives for me which is not really for, for where me, I a hang good, out. So that's probably why I haven't gotten to gin a, and tonics. But. A good, a good blended whiskey is for a hip flask on a, on a, on a, on a walk, on a country walk. Oh yeah. You have a, a good blend in your, in your, like, yeah. For me, that's where those belong. Yeah, you know, on, a, on a golf course when it's a little oh, bit, yeah, yeah, you just need a little, little knockback, uh, just to, 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 to warm up and get, get that, that going. But yeah. We, but everyone will hip. have different experiences yeah. of that. A little, yeah, 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 just get the burn going. But yeah, if, yes. if if anyone has interest in whiskey stories, please do uh, send them in. But I imagine you're, I think you're right. I imagine a lot of people were kids marketing Jack Daniels. So what about you, Whiskey God? You got any uh, whiskey stories? What's the first dram you remember? My first dram. <laughs> I could tell you, but then I'd have to kill you. And you both have too much good work to do, spreading the good word of whiskey, before I decide if you two need to be out of the way. <laughs> okay. Interesting. Weird. Not sure how I feel about that. No. Do you, uh... Got any other fond whiskey memories for us, perhaps? I do remember recommending a Jack Daniels and Coca-Cola to Lenny of Motorhead early in his career. Someone had to get him off those gin and tonics. Gross. And the rest, as they say, is history. You're welcome. More Jack Daniels, eh? More Jack Daniels from the God. It seems like everyone's whiskey story evolves around Jack Daniels. Anyway, yeah. shall we see what's in the, <laughs> what's going on in Booze Round? Actually, this week, Dave, it's Booze Hound. Booze <laughs> Because <laughs> this first Booze Hound story um, actually involves Jack Daniels again because they are in a legal battle. Is this show sponsored by Jack Daniels? <laughs> <laughs> this Not week's yet. show is brought yeah. to you. <laughs> we'll put the hashtags everywhere. Let's see what happens. No, it's, just, it's just complete coincidence, actually. Um, yeah. As I said, Jack Daniels in a legal battle with a company called VIP Products, who make a range of pet toys, including dog oh, yeah. toys called Silly Squeakers. 
Um, yes. Now, VIP products have based one of their squeaky toys on the classic Jack Daniels old number seven bottle, right? A dog shaped like a bottle? No, a dog squeaky toy shaped like a bottle. Right. Oh, I see. Yeah. Oh, right. Okay, I'm with you now. Yeah. Right. Gotcha. So, like a Jack Daniels bottle. And the label reads, yeah, Bad yeah, yeah. Spaniels, the old number two on your <laughs> Tennessee carpet. So, <laughs> so yeah. That's, um, that's nice. All right. But yeah, apparently... Toilet um, humour. Love it. Yes. Um, they have some more toys based on popular brands as well. And they all do... <laughs> they Go all on. have to do with pets kind of defecating everywhere, apparently. Um, Cataroma Extra, which is based on the Corona Extra <laughs> beer. <laughs> Butt Wiper. Based on Let me guess. Budweiser. Budweiser. Yeah. Oh, this is a good one, though. Blue Cat Trippin. What do you mean that's from, <laughs> Oh, that's that's PBR, isn't it? It's got to be PBR. Pat Blue Ribbon, yes, the PBR yeah. bottle. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, I don't see the big deal myself. But uh, all the uh, whiskey companies are kind of behind them, obviously. This legal. So battle, Jack Daniels is taking one. F- they're taking one for the team, are they? Yeah, they're sending in their their guys, aren't they? Um, the legal battle's been oh, going they, on they, since 2014, when JD. Jeez. Yeah, I know. Since JD sent the company a cease and desist order you know what i always thought that was ceased and assist <laughs> forever it's only when i was writing my notes for this the cease and desist because i thought because the the d of and rolled straight into the desist bit i thought it was cease and assist as in cease what you're doing and assist us in our investigation <laughs> This is up there with your Keith O'Sullivan. <laughs> Keith O'Sullivan, yes, not Kiefer Sullivan. Yeah. Um, C- yes. Who's called Kiefer, anyway? <laughs> Who is called Kiefer? What sort of name is Kiefer? <laughs> Keith O'Sullivan, everyone. That's his real name. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, carry on. Anyway, it's now heading to the Supreme Court. Um, <laughs> VIP are saying as that the toys... As high up as the Supreme Court? Yeah. They're saying... Uh, wow. They're saying their toys are expressive and satirical, therefore protected by the First Amendment. Um, yeah, that, I found that, that story sense. on the Neat Poor site, everyone. I'm go. I'll we will put a link in, in the old... Yep. Hey, yes. Nick, just... just uh, but talk. You mentioned Budweiser earlier. I mean, their marketing Budweiser. throughout the 90s what, oh, yeah. was incredible. It was. I mean, because I used to... A similar thing as a teenager, Budweiser beer. If I went to a pub and had Bud on tap, it was the best night ever. It didn't happen very often. But I loved Bud, it and was. it was because of the frogs and and the and the What's Up stuff. There was so many stuff. It was great. Absolutely loved Budweiser. Yeah, uh, uh, you know what? And um, it's not good. Bi- like, and that, and now as I've got older, it's not that great beer. But yeah, you you, you go got a bottle opener with Budweiser on. This is I from ninety four. Budweiser merchandise. This is exactly. from ninety four. I think it says true on one side. Yeah. And what's that? Yeah, of course it does. On the other side, what's this that? is a bo- my bottle opener, which I still have on my key rings, listener. Um, listener. There's only one person listening this week. Um, but it still works. It's really worn down, but there you go. Do you remember the frogs? Frogs are amazing. Bird. Bird. Wise. Bird. Oh, yeah. Wise. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Do you remember in The Simpsons where they, they parodied it? And then the uh, the alligator no. came up and went, cores. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ate them all. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, actually, Nick, I've got a story for us for Booze Round or yeah. Booze Hound, although I don't really really works for Booze Round. So Bimba have uh, have got the Bimba Club release number one coming out. So you and I, after our distillery tour of the, the little distillery, which is just down the road from here, yeah. uh, Bimba, English whiskey, we both joined the Bimba Club. We did, didn't we? And they're doing their inaugural Bimba Club bottling. Uh, it's the 2020 Club Bottling, and it's a Pedro Jimenez finished single malt, which I believe is a wine, a white grape wine used to make sweet d- dessert wines. So there's no price on that yet, but it's on the uh, Bimbo have advertised that. There's also something else. If you, if when you go onto their website, if you as you join the Bimbo Club, you can also apply to do a special tasting, and they'll send you some whiskey with your bottling. Oh, I didn't know that. So make sure if you're gonna, yeah, go go. Make sure you go on to the to the if you're a member of the club. Get involved on the club website. Yes, and, uh, and yeah. make sure you, you won't get this bottle in. I don't think, but uh, well worth it for the future. Well worth it. Yeah. Yes. Um, how did hang on? How did you pronounce that, Pedro Jimenez? Jimenez. Hang on. I'm just going to do a quick little. Uh, <laughs> how do you like speech thing on Google? Right. It's spelled X I M 
E N E S. It's Imenez. It's definitely Imenez. It's just what the X does, and I'm saying it's him. No, I'm, I'm not disagreeing. I'm just I'm just checking for my own uh, references. Right here, here we go. <laughs> Pedro Zimenez. Pedro Zimenez. Zimenez. Mm, I'm not sure about that. Pedro Zimenez. According to the voice of the balls, <laughs> Zinamez. <laughs> Pedro, as you, name, as you name him. Pedro Zimenez. How to pronounce. <laughs> Jimenez. 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 <laughs> there, Pedro Jimenez. 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 It's not, they, they, it's like a kind of T H E thing. Pedro Jimenez. Pedro Mayonnaise. Gotcha. <laughs> Pedro yeah, that too. Mayonnaise. So the new Bimba Jimenez. Club inaugural Bimba Club bottling is called Pedro Mayonnaise. Pedro Mayonnaise. <laughs> Right, that was a great booze round, mate. Whiskey! So, yes, thanks for tuning in to another episode. Episode 33. Two, no, 32. Two, this 32. has been episode 32. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah. um, so, <laughs> we, of course, uh, have been drinking our, our Four Roses out of our Whiskey and Things Glen Caring glasses. Um, and we may need to do a thing about Glen Cairns one week. Actually, we, we should do that maybe in the next couple of weeks. A whole show on whiskey glasses, whiskey whiskey vessels. Yeah, maybe, maybe we should try and get someone on from from Glen Cairn to explain why. Don't make any promises, mate. Are. Don't make any promises. I'm not making promises, no. but uh, <laughs> all right, I'm I'm put I'm putting it out there that I'm going to try and get someone on from Glen Cairn into the universe. He's putting it out there into the universe. And now, and now if, it, if if it doesn't happen, it's because Glen Cairn don't want to do it, and that's that's on them, not on us. Okay. So uh, we, we we'll try and make that happen over the course of time. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, you can of course get your own Glen Cairn whiskey and things glass uh, on our website. With along with the hoodies, we've only got about six hoodies left. Mm. So if you want a whiskey and things first round hoodie, then you best get on the website. It's cold, yeah, and they're good hoodies. And the first round, so, that's uh, it. It's the first round. You're not going to get the first round it's again. It's the first round, and we're not getting them any again. And, and also, you know, t-shirts. If you want to wear a t-shirt under your hoodie, because sometimes you're in your hoodie and then you're then you're too hot. You're too hot, and you can take it off, and you, and you're still you're still wearing your first round stuff. Yeah, and it's like, oh, he's on brand today. Yeah, yeah. and everyone knows. It just makes you look cool. You know, you always get the nice whiskeys in the first round. Okay, that's, oh, true. That's, that's true. What you got to do? They're going to become collectors' items one day, Nick. They will. You know, the first bottlings. The first bottlings are always always uh, inaugural. Very appreciated. Yes, um, but we've mentioned a few times today uh, Patreon. And of course, if you sign up to our Patreon after a few weeks or a few months, or after a few months, I think it is, depending on what level you're in, uh, you will get a Glen Karen anyway, uh, as well yeah. as as one of these t-shirts. And yeah, so it's worth signing up through. And there's bonus content in there as well. But if, also, if you do want to help the podcast, um, then purchasing your whiskey with the Whiskey Exchange will help us, especially if you click on the links within yes. our description when we post them. Uh, we now have a lovely uh, little thing with them going on. So yeah. Uh, yeah, helps the show a little bit, funding wise. If you would like to tr- drink some of the whiskies we've been drinking, go and ha- have a hunt for those links. If there's stuff that we've drunk in the past and you can't find a link, just ask. We'll send you the link anyway. Yeah. What are we doing next week, Nick? Uh, yes, uh, next week we're going to Japan. Nika whiskey. We're doing the all malt, malt and coffee malt. Do you know who bought me this one? I don't. Uh, another one from Hannah Beasley. Beasley. She uh, she got me this uh, to celebrate a tour I did last in 2019. So uh, there's not much left of this one. So I'm looking forward to finishing. I've been saving it for the show. Uh, but yeah, looking forward to this. Looking forward oh. to that. So well, um, I've got a dram. I've got a dram of it. You do. You do. I was very generous to you. Yes. After <laughs> this week, after we've done the Nika, the week after, if we're going to some more. We're going to some newer releases. I think, um, which would be good. Ooh. Yeah, new releases because we we want to keep them up to date. We're just kind of getting through a few favourites because uh, Dave wants to finish his bottles, um, which is I do. understandable. I do, but uh, we'll be doing some newer, I do. newer, newer releases after that. Anyway, okay, great. That was a good little uh, thirty-two, I reckon. Dave, enjoy that. I enjoyed Love that. It. I've enjoyed this. I've, I, I was in a bad mood earlier, and now I'm in a good mood, so that's good. Good. That's what this is about. That's what this is about. Yeah, it's about having fun. Pedro it's about fun mayonnaise. And having time. Pedro mayonnaise. Pedro mayonnaise. And um, yes, I'm, yes, <laughs> I may have a Jack Daniels and Coke yes. after this. <laughs> Special. So thanks for tuning in. Uh, tune in next week for more uh, 
more fun and f- for all the family. No prizes <laughs> to be won. <laughs> no prizes to be won. Yes, uh, yes. Um, exactly. So in, in the meantime, don't forget, this is where we always say cheers. cheers. Thanks, Thanks for, for coming. coming. Whiskey and Things has been brought to you by And Things Productions. Pedro Zimenez.